how's it going? This is Stupid Asshole here. Um, I'm going to attempt to do my first blog. And one thing with blogs is you got to have a... Uh, oh my god, I backed up into my bush. I'm going to make my first vlog. And I can only dream or hope that I can be as successful as Casey Neistat. If you guys don't know who Casey Neistat is, go ahead and look at it on YouTube. The guy's got his shit together. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mimic what he does. So I got my own style going on, but I don't really know if I should call this a vlog for the first one. But it maybe it's more of a rant on how ignorant us humans are at times. There's certain things that happen that people don't comprehend that kind of irritates me. And I wanna, I'm gonna use an example. It's fallout, and right now the deer are. I think I got a dead door open. I do. There we go. Uh, the bucks are ready to chase doe that are in heat. And they get all stupid. So, going with that is the normal... Well, this is the time of year to watch the roads because the deer are being dumb. But it's not being dumb. Them deer are smarter than what we think. And they're smart enough, they're capable of committing suicide at the hands of humans and you might think what what are you talking about well when you're driving down the road and going all relaxed 50 58 59 miles an hour from a hard day's work and a deer runs out of the woods or the field and runs right for the headlights i mean aims directly at them and pow you smash into the deer and there's your day's gone now the deer are using the humans in their vehicles to kill themselves and we're too dumb to realize it. Hunters will know. You all know what I'm talking about. It all starts back in July when you're planning to go hunting in the fall. You're gonna go into work, you're gonna ask your boss, I gotta watch for traffic. And you're, you're gonna ask your boss, hey, I'm gonna need that Saturday before Thanksgiving off. And your boss is like, well, I don't know. You know, we get a lot of guys gone, and I cannot schedule you in, so we're going to have to see when it comes closer to that time. And you're like, you know, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. So that sets everything off to where you're putting your job on the line, and you piss your boss off. <sighs> that sets things in motion for how important it is for you to go gun hunting. I got to turn my damn hair up. So, comes closer to hunting, you've went to Cabela's, Walmart, uh, Gander Mountain, you've got your supplies, you've got everything that you need, and you've got everything laid out, you've washed your clothes and sent away, you've got your, uh, your bullets, your gun, everything's clean and polished, you've sighted your gun in, you can hit an apple, uh, one out of five times at 500 yards. And you're feeling very confident. You've gone up, you put your stand up ahead of time. You've got everything set up which way the wind blows. This and that's going on. So come opening morning, you are ready. And you get up extra early, you have coffee. You get the coffee in you and stuff. And you're sitting there with your buddies or whatever and all excited and adrenaline pumping and stuff like that. You start, it's like 10 degrees outside. So you know you got to dress warm. You take all them clothes that you, you've had hanging outside and that, that for two weeks to get rid of any human scent whatsoever and you put all them on and your buddies are like come on let's go let's go so you end up getting out getting in the truck and then you realize i gotta take a shit so now you gotta go back in the house take your shit off or your stuff off and go ahead and take a dump now you're back out into the truck vehicle whatever the hell you have and you go up into the into the woods you're so hot and sweaty, it ain't funny by the time you do get in your stand. So you sit down and you loosen everything up and you're like, this sucks, but it's worth it. And there you are. You still have 35 minutes for daylight left, which is unreal. You're, you're like, oh, I got this planned out good. It ain't even going to be light for another. Hold on a minute. I got to go slow. Where am I? about people being in a road, but we've got a telephone company crew working on something, so they can be in a road if they want. We've got cones and everything up the morning. 
Sometimes you get these idiots that park a lot, they're filling up their semis and grain trucks on a road that's barely wide enough for two cars as it is, and they park over a stupid knoll, and when you go up to go around them, you're in the other lane, you don't know if nothing's coming or not. And the idiot's just sitting there. They're just sitting there. Whose fault is that going to be when you have a damn accident? But anyways, I don't even remember what I was talking about. You're in your stand. And it's long before light out, and it's nice and quiet. There's no wind blowing. You can see maybe 10 feet in front of you. And you hear noises in the woods. You can hear, literally hear, a pin drop 30 feet away. Every little sound, your, your senses are heightened, and you're, you're sitting there listening, watching. Got everything laid out, and it starts getting a little bit lighter out, and you can hear something. You can hear leaves rustling, and it's like, oh, it's right there. What was that? Oh, no, oh, it's right there. And then it's getting louder, and they have two different sounds. They're like, seem like they're coming together and the back apart. You're like, they've got to, it's got to be a deer. And then the rust one's louder and you're the twigs break. And you're thinking, oh my god, it, it's got to be two bucks fighting. Well, what, what kind of luck is this? And it, it gets light enough that you can barely start making something out, but you're not sure if it's a tree or what. And all of a sudden you realize, it's two squirrels playing. And you're like, what? Well, how in the hell... The two squirrels playing have the ability to sound like a 747 flying into the woods and crash land. It blows me away. But anyhow, so you get past the squirrels playing, you know they're there and that, and you, 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 you've learned what that sound is for that day, or that hour. You'll forget it next year. But anyways, you're sitting there waiting. And I'll say, oh, oh my god, I hear more noise. This is a lot louder. And you hear literally branches cracking and breaking. And you're like, God, it's a deer. Maybe he's rubbing his horns on a tree. And you're sitting there watching. And all of a sudden, right above you, here comes a damn turkey flies into the tree. And you got a flock of them in there. And they all come in and land in your valley. And you're like, what in the hell is going on? Why do they got to be in my valley? So then you're back to pissed off mode and disgusted and that all settles the turkeys roost or whatever they want to do and sit and you sit there and wait and you hear another song and oh this time it's light enough out because it's 8 a.m and it's a buck and he's coming over the hill right towards you and oh my god it's a nice rack fucking damn fly on it but uh only one problem is he knows there's something airy and he's real cautious. You got your gun land, you know, right down beside you, ready to go, but the safety's on. You're nowhere near ready to shoot because you won, the buck's coming, and you can't move. You know you can't so much as uh, cough. You can't turn your head. You can't uh, blink because you know that deer's gonna see you, and he's looking, and he's looking, and you're like, and you got a tickle in your throat. You at least want to try to clear it though, but you got to cough. You can't cough. And you, your eyes, your eyes are wide open. And you're like, ah, do I blink? You don't dare blink. Your sockets, your eyeballs are drying out. <laughs> Balls. Just talking about it's making me cough. Terrible. But you don't want to, you can't do nothing. You can't even move your head or blink. Because you know that deer's going to take off and run. And all the planet you've done meant to is for nothing if he takes off and sees your eye blink. So, you sit there and wait. And he's getting closer and closer. And he's, he's looking. But he makes a mistake and he turns his head. So now you got your chance to get your gun. And you get your gun up and you're sliding it up like that. And you're sitting there moving, moving it, not touching nothing. Everything's quiet. You're getting close. And you do one little error. You brush the butt of your gun on a little bit of a piece of leaf or a branch. And it goes... And if you're explosive and runs out of the woods and you're like, what the hell's going on? He's running up the valley. He's running up to the top of the ridge. And you're like, no, 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 no. So 
you pull up and you get one shot off. You actually get a shot off at the deer. You think, oh my god, it's a good shot. I think I got him. I think I hit him. Oh, hey, there he is, like, oh, is that him or not? And you look and you blew a goddamn tree up in front of him. So you're sitting there, oh, just great. Now, every animal, every insect in the entire valley knows I'm in here. You sit back down, you're like, this sucks. The deer's long gone. You're pissed off, so you get out of your stand. You go home with your tail between your legs. You don't want to tell nobody about what happened and stuff like that. You're just soaking it all in, how terrible this is. And you're like, finally, later in the afternoon, you're going to go out to your relative's house and friends and hear about all their stupid-ass deer stories they got. And once in a while, somebody got lucky and stuff like that. So you get in your car that has a real loud exhaust because... Up here in the Northwoods, they love to just put mort and salt all over the roads, and it just keep piling it on to where your car just literally rocks from the bottom up, and you have no mufflers. And you, you think automotive manufacturers, manufacturers, or somebody would figure out how to keep the cars from rusting as much as they do, and it just blows me away. It just... Uh, you know what, I went off on a tangent. But anyways, you're, you're on your way out to your friend's house with the, or your relatives, whatever, with the loud-ass exhaust, and it's nighttime, and you got two headlights on, piercing 200 yards, and here comes a deer. He aims right for your headlights, and pow! Smashes into your car! He runs directly into your gosh darn car! Totals it out, knocks the radiator clear out of the car, windshield's cracked, you're sitting there like, this can't happen. It cannot happen. I want to do things. The deer are doing it deliberately, because as you've seen, you can brush the butt of your gun in the woods on a little twig, and that deer's going to run out of there. You can blink your eye, the deer's going to run away from it. Now you got a car driving with bright headlights, super loud exhaust, because it's, it's rotted out, and the deer's got a million options. He can stand still. He can run one one way. He can run the other way. He can run this way, run that way. But he always seems to go run towards the car. So it's either suicide or deer stupid. Now, if they truly were stupid, I should be able to take my car, open it morning with the loud exhaust. Turn my lights on. Yeah, I'll turn my radio on. And drive up in the woods. And I should be able to get a deer without a gun. Hell, I should be able to get 15 deer. But stop thinking. If you could drive your car in the woods, do you think the deer are going to run at it? No. So it goes back to suicide. Some deer want to kill themselves and they're using us at their expense. Ponder on that one. Figure that out. You know, that's the end of my vlog. Now I'm pretty pissed off. Good pissed off and I gotta go to work. Should've talked about something happy. Maybe next time.